one of the most misdiagnosed and underdiagnosed gut conditions. And yet 11% of the world population is suffering from a digestive problem called SIBO. Thank you for staying with us. I'm Erin LeBeau. And I'm Shirley Chan in for Tamsin this evening. Well, SIBO is an acronym and it stands for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Even when diagnosed, it can leave people suffering on a very restrictive diet, sometimes without any results. Yeah, but two Cedar sinai gastroenterologists have developed a new eating plan that can be maintained long term. So first of all, thank you for joining us. Great to be with you both. Uh, so, Dr. Uh, Pimentel, uh, some people may have heard of SIBO before, but they're not sure exactly what it is. Can you explain what some of the symptoms are? So, SIBO is basically an accumulation of too much bacteria in your small intestine, and uh, the symptoms are usually abdominal discomfort, bloating, especially after eating, and then you can have diarrhea or sometimes patients have constipation and that really is what they struggle with but they really go back and forth they could have diarrhea one day constipation the next uh, so, but it's really challenging interesting all right and dr. Razai what causes SIBO and how can someone find out that they have it and are there even any tests for it there are multiple causes for it uh, for example when you get food poisoning uh, that can lead to abnormality of the movement of your gut, and that does not allow for your small bowel to toilet and get rid of all the bacteria, so the bacteria uh, accumulates. There are a couple of tests for it. Uh, the, the way that we non-invasively diagnose it is through breath testing, because bacteria produce gases in our small bowel that we do not produce, for example, hydrogen and uh, methane, and we can detect it in our breath. And based on how much are those levels, we can say whether there's excessive amount of bacteria in your small bowel, whether you have SIBO uh, or not. The other way around it is to do endoscopy under anesthesia and aspirate the juice in the small bowel and uh, test it via culturing to see what type of bacteria is overgrowing in the small bowel and then tailor the treatment based on that. Interesting. So, Dr. Pimentel, are there any treatment options available for this? Well, one of the primary treatment options depends on the type of SIBO you have. We have now three types. Uh, one is the hydrogen type, the other is the methane type, and the third is a hydrogen sulfide, a new third gas. But generally, the starting point is antibiotics and a specific non-absorbed antibiotics that, that uh, are very, very effective. And then you get the patient to a better place, and then we could talk about how to maintain, and that's really uh, with diet. And, and now together, you actually have developed a new kind of eating plan. Dr. Razai, what makes this one different and what makes it work? As you said, it's a plan. It's not about you just don't eat something and uh, you can eat this thing. So it's about how uh, the physiology of the gut works. And based on that, we devised meal spacing that allows your small bowel uh, to be able to uh, toilet itself and keep the bacteria in check. And also certain foods that uh, make the environment for the bacteria more favorable and it, uh, they grow more. So we tell them, uh, patients to avoid that. Having said that, we try to be as, uh, as less restrictive as we can uh, because putting patients on very restrictive yeah. diets are shown to be causing a lot of uh, problems and long-term issues. So that's why we devised this plan to help patients uh, to have a normal social professional uh, life uh, without restricting their diet to a point that they can't do anything. Okay, so Dr. Pimentel, tell us a little, about, a little bit about the different foods that are allowed in this eating plan, the LFE plan. Right, low fermentation eating is LFE, uh, and, and essentially you want to feed you, you don't want to feed the bacteria of your gut because the bacteria are tending to accumulate and they, they love it when you put good fresh nutrients. In, in essence, the bacteria really love carbohydrates. So I'll give you an example. You can leave your olive oil on the counter at home. You don't have to refrigerate it because bacteria aren't going to grow in oil by itself. If you put sugar in there, they'll grow. But there are sugars that are good for you. In other words, you absorb them quickly. Basically, table sugar, you absorb it extremely quickly. But the sugars, for example, in beans or fiber, 
I know everybody's eating fiber, but if you eat fiber in, in bacterial overgrowth, you're feeding the bacteria because it's a non-absorbed fiber. So beans and fiber are the real big ones. Uh, broccoli and other uh, legumes would, would also be a challenge. I, I've seen so many times going on an airplane, uh, you've got soda, you've got lentils, and you've got hummus dip, and, and uh, this is all bad stuff for, for the SIBO patient because they're going to ferment it and they're going to get a lot more gas and symptoms. So we try to restrict those as much as possible. Wow. Yeah, what's interesting is that some of the foods on that list are they're actually for good you. for you. Yeah, so it's pretty <laughs> interesting. Uh, now, Dr. Zai, who would be a good candidate for this plan and can you just dive right in and start it? Uh, no, so I think you should do this uh, with the help of a healthcare uh, professional after you have proper diagnosis. And based on that, because uh, as Dr. Pimentel was saying, there are different types of bacterial uh, overgrowth. You need to know which type you have, and there are different treatment options for it. And one of the uh, options is uh, the diet that will help uh, alleviate your symptoms, which I think you should do it with, your, uh, with the help of your healthcare professional and your dietitian. Because at the end of the day, you want to start these diets to see if you feel better. And after that, reintroduce food so you're not restricted in your diet. And as you said, uh, you have a complete food and healthy uh, diet. Uh, so you're uh, in long term, you enjoy uh, your life. And also your body enjoys a, a variety of food that will benefit you. Okay, so doctors, before we let you go, where can people go to get more information um, about this condition and also your LFE plan, eating plan? Either one of you. Um, so we, we actually wrote a book called The uh, Microbiome Connection. That's one really good way. Or uh, goodlifegoodlfe.com is a good uh, uh, source. Um, Dr. Rezai, you agree? Yeah, I agree. Um, I think that's uh, one of the reasons that we wrote this book to... Um, increase awareness about uh, this uh, disease uh, and uh, people can seek help and feel better. All okay. right, Dr. Pimtal and Razai, thank you so much. Very, very interesting uh, discussion topic on something I actually didn't know anything right. about. Mm -hmm. Have a great day. Thank you.